All right everyone, welcome to the Rugby League History Channel. Tonight's video is going to be the top 10 most hated NRL players, in my opinion. Before I get into the video, I just want to give a couple of shout outs to some YouTubers out there. Beanie Car Sports, Nick from Australia, NRL Vid 090, Bundy Chick 82, Warriors NRL Fanatics and CT Dingo. Go check out those Rugby League YouTubers. Getting back to this top 10 most heated NRL players list, it's going to be comprised of players that have played from 1998 onwards. So people that have played pre-1998, they're not going to be on the list. It's going to be just the top 10 of these particular players. And I'm going to start from 10th and I'm going to go up to 1st. So coming in at number 10 is Carmi Norman. Now Carmi Norman, he has a distinction of playing the three different clubs and at each of those three different clubs, the fans despise him just as much. So at Brisbane, Parramatta and St George, he's not a popular character. He's been accused of caring more about things that he does outside of rugby league. His attitude's been criticised in the past and coupled with a few off-field incidents as well, he's probably one of the most unlikable people in rugby league at the moment. Coming in at number nine is Jared Maria Hargreaves. He is known for a bit of a bully on the field. He's known as a bit of a group on the field. He's been in the judiciary multiple times for some unsavoury incidents. He's not particularly liked, and I think the fact that he plays for Eastern Suburbs Sydney Roosters doesn't help his cause. Coming in at number eight is Josh Maguire. Josh Maguire is a, another player that's very similar to Jared Maria Hargreaves. He has a lot of problems on the field with his discipline. He's gone to the judiciary for some very unsavoury incidents, particularly eye gouging. Now, coming from someone that actually has just one eye in himself, he should know better than going around trying to gouge out people's eyes, but he does it anyway. He also pretty much pissed off the entire New South Wales population by doing that tweet about five or six years ago where he said, winners have parties, losers have meetings. And uh, I think... Particularly with the Brisbane fans, they weren't really upset to see him go to North Queensland. Coming in at number seven is Andrew Fafita. He's a player that has had multiple off-field issues. I won't go into those. I'm pretty sure you all know. He also has a bit of an identity crisis, which has annoyed uh, large sections of the rugby league community. He constantly flip-flops and changes who he wants to play for. Is, is he a New South Welshman? Is he Australian? Is he Kiwi? Is he Tongan? Who knows? We don't know because he keeps changing all the time. And of course, that's going to piss people off. So naturally, when he turned his back on Australia and decided to play for Tonga, that annoyed some people. So coupled with the off-field things and then the fact that he plays for Cronulla, who are one of the most unpopular sides in the rugby league world at the moment, Andrew Vee is at number seven. And number six is Michael Ennis. Michael Ennis was known as a group on the field, he was known as an antagonizer. He'd get under people's skin. He even got under players' skin that normally weren't that fiery on the field. I remember one time he got Ethan Einmarsh sent to the sin bin after seeing Summit. He wasn't a very popular player amongst the players. Off the field, he's trying to restore his, um, you could see, reputation with Fox Sports. I think he's doing an all right job doing that. But when people talk about groups on the field and they talk about he did players when they were playing. Michael Ennis is certainly up there. And number five, Billy Slater. Billy Slater is not very well liked in New South Wales. He's also outside of the state of origin. He's not particularly liked in Queensland either. If you go for Brisbane or North Queensland. There's also been the salary cap thing. He still says that he's won four premierships. Sorry, Billy, you've only won two. You cheated to get the other two. He was also known as, um, when he tried to stop tries, he'd dive in like he was playing for the Boston Red Sox on, on the home plate there. He also had um, a time where whenever he used to catch a bomb, he used to do karate kicks and kick people in the face. There was also some other grubby things he did on the field and coupled with some things that he's done off the field, he's certainly one of the most heated players in the NRL. In his final ever game in the grand final against Eastern Suburbs 2018, he was booed by large sections of the crowd. He wasn't applauded, so we can all see where people stand on Billy Slater. Coming in at number four, Matt Lodge. 
He has had a few notable off-field incidents before playing for Brisbane. He had the incident where he had problems with his ex-girlfriend. His ex-girlfriend said that he was a, a violent scumbag. And then there was also the thing in New York City. Fuck knows why he was there. I don't know why, but he assaulted a number of people there. He was very lucky not to be put in jail over there for a very long time because we all know what Americans are like with capital punishment and punishment in general. They're, they're quite harsh compared to the rest of the world. So he was very lucky to get off with that. Then we signed with Brisbane. That was very controversial. And then I remember the, the first few games that he played in the NRL, he was booed every time he touched the ball. And even today when a player is suspended, people like to bring up Matt Lodge and say, why is that fucking scumbag allowed to play while so-and-so is not allowed to play? So naturally that causes resentment in the rugby league community. Now into the top three we go. Coming in at number three is Will Chambers. Will Chambers, he played for Queensland, Melbourne. Melbourne being the most disliked club in the NRL for probably the last 10 to 15 years, didn't know his cars, but he was a grub on and off the field. He also um, went to Rugby Union. Now, as a Rugby League fan, and I know a lot of other Rugby League fans naturally, we don't like when players leave to go to other codes, but especially when you go to Rugby Union, because Rugby Union and Rugby League were like this. So... Other players have done it and it's been very unpopular but when Will Chambers did it, it was very unpopular when he decided to leave Rugby League to go to Union. He came back uh, for Melbourne once again. I remember he had pissed off pretty much the entire power battle supporter base when in the elimination, uh, in the qualifying final against power battle, he fell asleep with the ball with about 30 seconds ago. Should have been apparently, wasn't. He's also done some other grubby things on the field. Uh, towards the back end of his career, he was owned by Latrell Mitchell and there was a a, a sea of um, jubilation when Latrell Mitchell finally stood up to him and was one of the few players that stood up to him. Pushed him up against the sponsorship bar in the 2018 Grand Final. The whole crowd loved it and I think everyone on social media loved it. And there weren't many dry eyes when Will Chambers announced that he was leaving Rugby League once again. Coming in at number two is Cameron Smith. Cameron Smith, um, he's been one of the most disliked players on the field and off the field for the last 10 years. Of course, you got the salary cap thing. He says that the club did out wrong. He wants those premierships reinstated. He feels that he was cheated when he was the one that was doing the cheating. Um, he plays for Melbourne naturally. And as I said earlier with some of the other players, Melbourne's the most disliked club in the NRL. That doesn't help. He's also accused of being referee Smith, how he influences games, his playing styles come into question. And then I think his off-field personality and what he's done off the field besides the salary cap thing, that's got a lot of people's noses up and naturally that breeds resentment. And um, just a key some point, when he announced that he was going to release that autobiography the other month, I read most of the comments on social media and I can tell you about 90 to 95% of them were negative. They weren't positive. And now coming in at number one, the most heated NRL player in the NRL era. And this is just my opinion, by the way. It's going to go to Paul Gallen. Paul Gallen, for me, is the most heated NRL player in, in the modern era. He's not only disliked by the entirety, entirety of Queensland, he's also disliked by pretty much all of New South Wales as well. I think the only people that would see that they like him would be Cronulla fans. And I think there'd be some Cronulla fans out there that would probably say, oh, fuck, when he shut up, he's just embarrassing the club. You've got the whole peptides thing. He still gets called Peptide Paul up until this day. Then he, he had the career with New South Wales, wasn't very successful. And even off the field now, he's still a very unpopular figure. If you don't believe me, go read some of the comments and just read some of the things that he's done on and off the field in his career. And he's just, I think, as a whole, he's the most disliked person that's played rugby league in probably the last 20 to 25 years. Before I go, though, some honourable mentions. It was a tough list to make. So here's some honourable people that are disliked in rugby league, but they didn't meet the list. Joey Lee Louie, Gordon Tallis, Darius Boyd, 
Josh Dugan, Robbie Farre, Jimmy Soward, Tavita Latu, Justin Hodges and Simon Wolford. So that's my list for the top 10 most heated NRL players in the NRL era. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button. And if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you are subscribed. I'm going to be doing some more videos this week, so stay tuned for those. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here, and I'll catch us all later in the next video. Alright, ta -ra.